right, let's, where are we at here? No, so uh, just a reminder too, if you miss any of this, I'll be cutting these up and turning them into videos that'll be on the YouTube channel so that you guys have uh, a little bit of a backup. Oh, I keep forgetting to, there we go. So you have a backup that you can get to. But yeah, we're just gonna ease into it every uh, every day that we have a stream. It'll start with me just kind of talking about whatever, doing what I normally do, and then we'll uh, we'll come back in here and uh, get to the the meaty stuff, you know. So how are you guys doing? I think I'm gonna. I need to assault this. His head looks so like ugh, you know. Oh, Ray, what's up? How you doing? Is it I can? What's going on, man? Oh, my music's too low. You guys can't hear the music, sadly. But uh, I'm sure you have your own. Yeah, so this dragon's actually from the challenge. I think Forceling actually took this picture. I think I'm going to use the move brush. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to turn the perspective off here. Man, my mic's in the way. How's this? This isn't a thing anymore. This never happens. So if we turn the perspective off, it might be easier to just bring this up without skewing too much. I think I'm going to veer a little bit away from the, the reference. And go for something more. Man, that head is. <laughs> you can tell I don't make characters. Oh, I like that whole idea of like, you know how the mouths are kind of, they do that sometimes. It's kind of cool. Dude, that picture is super, super red. I mean, Melissa, you've been doing a really good job on your challenge. Yeah, is everyone doing uh, pretty good? It's a Monday, you know? Can't be too bad. I always look at Mondays as like the beginning. Like you would treat a Monday like a New Year's, you know? So let's bring these up here. And then I think his eyes are in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting the feeling now. This is... Uh... So you can see in the front of his, his mouth right here. This should go down more. Nice, just double checking. I have symmetry on. <laughs> oh, that'd be terrible. <clears throat> oh, Reeds, thanks, man. How you doing? And Cat Kit, or is it Cat Kitsu? Thanks for the tier one. How how are you? Rocking the hoodie, dude. So cozy. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay, so his like upper head area. I can't tell from this angle, but I'm going to assume there's like a lot more going on here. Oh, I got some weird. What? Why? What? Like a weird geometry stuff going on here. Maybe I can. There we go. Very good. Reed bringing all the bits. <laughs> New Dincon, what's up, Happy Gamer? How you doing? Oh man, he's like really flat in the. You see this? Really flat there. The move brush, bring these out. There we go. His ears are pretty weak as well. Is that lazy on? What was that? Yeah, it looked like it was lazy. Lazy brush.
Looks like there's like a little shape in there. That's interesting. Uh, where are we at here? Yeah, you th Leo, you thinking snake hook? Because I snake hooked it earlier. I just don't want to pull it too far away from that. You know what I mean? Maybe I should mask it. We'll do this and then snake hook. I turn this. Oh, I don't think we can have that on with the. And then the lobe really goes down. Cool, cool, cool. Whoa, buddy. How good are you at drawing? Uh, I've been getting better, but I'm terrible at drawing. I wouldn't say it's, uh, is it useful to learn it for 3D? I would say you will be a better 3D artist if you can draw, because you can illustrate your ideas further. Actually, what I would say is you'll be a better, Tej, what's up, man? You'll be a better developer for it. Like when you need to be able to communicate with, uh, uh, let's let's say you need to be able to communicate with, was this not, with level design, right? It's gonna be much easier if you have uh, the ability to illustrate what you're trying to do. You know what I mean? Oh, this is not. <laughs> You know what I mean? Snake hook like that, Craig or CRG. And <laughs> remember when you got bad grades in drawing class in high school? Did I? Drawing's painful, man. It was it was painful back then too. Once I found out that you could like do 3D and then, and then just like put Photoshop on three dimensional models. I it was game over, man. I couldn't stop myself. Yeah, see, these are all weird now too. Got to move all these guys up. Now I mime, hey, thank you for the, uh... they're all beard now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so for this, this upper area, this is totally snake hook territory. Up here. Oh yeah, nailed it. Oh, is my Swedish keyboard on? What's happening here? It is. I got my Swedish keyboard uh, toggled on. Is this for a scene or anything? Uh, no, this is, so this is one of the challenges um, for the Empire. It's just one of our standard challenges. Also, don't forget for the, uh, the panel that's in 63 minutes or 64 minutes roughly, is um, we're, we're taking questions that are in the Discord. So if you have any questions, I can just bring it over here really fast so you can see. Um, there's a channel called questions for Dincon and you can ask questions that'll go towards the, uh, the panel, uh, near the end. Make sure to answer some good stuff in there. Swedish keyboard, best keyword. Nay, nay, nay tech. Um, but, uh, yeah, just a little reminder. Oh, so I'm not, uh, very good at this type of stuff, but I think uh, it was, it looked too fun to just ignore, you know? So I think there's one, I don't know. I don't know how many horns are in there. 
let's let's sculpt some of that out and then we'll snake hook some of it so i i think there's something here and then there's maybe these guys and then i think there's one really big one here and then Ooh, they go behind the oh man they go behind the ear okay so these are probably even further back they're probably really like ones here there's this one this one and then looks like maybe a smaller one right here these guys are quite big as well okay so let's yeah let's let's do this again We'll just kind of smooth it out. That way we get a little bit more geometry. Man, I love the fact that you have this Sculptress Pro mode in here now. Let's get that extra level of detail. Okay. All right, Leo, have a good one, man. See, I feel like just pull it up and then back and then you get the kind of the shape we're looking for oh to to uh up and back there we go and then up and back This is going to be difficult. <clears throat> Kaz, what's up, man? Uh, for the challenge, we have to use only the image provider or can we research further? You can go the challenge is only to like help you uh push yourself, you know. There's no there's no other reason behind it. Like the the goal is to give you something to to build on that that gets you out of like your your creative rut if you're in one. You know what I mean? There's one right here too. I think we can smooth this all out now. Yeah, it's kind of working. This shape is not not really working for me, but I I do also like it a little bit. Yo, what was that? Hang on. Hang on. That was a concerning message. Hang on here. <laughs> huh, weird. I'm good now. What? That is freaking. That's weird. Seems okay. Dude, it didn't even. It doesn't even say I dropped any frames. How strange is that? That's uh, kind of scary, though. Not going to lie. I saw that earlier. I saw a message that said something. <laughs> Twitch couldn't contain this much handsome. Uh, I saw a message about something to do with uh, local drive, blah, blah, blah. Wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, right now? Is it okay? Because now I'm weirded out. Audio continued, image froze, subdued. Yeah, I got a message about my local hard drive, which was, that was scary. 
I'll tell you what. I tell you what. Can you give the dragon a hat? <laughs> That's a great idea. I think it might be this. The sculptress is maybe a little too intensive. Let me know if it happens again. I'm doing this like. I'm adding just a little bit of geo in here. Hackers. You think it's hackers? That's madness. Dang, I need that snake hook for the. Okay, we're going in. Uh. Okay, turning that off. Let's see it work with. Oh yeah, if I isolate the head, yeah, that's very true. Very true. Need to use sculptures more, dude. It's so useful. You can see it. We are getting a little bit of a problem where like these areas are thinner, uh, and you just need to be inflating. Often when you start pulling shapes that are um, just not holding up, especially at these at the base here. And then I guess we can go into uh, no, we go into standard here and just start pulling out these. Yeah, see, this is still too thin. The last time I did a shape like this was the, uh, the, what was it? The hydralisk on my portfolio. There we go. Oh man, it's so low poly up here. Ooh. These are also kind of shaped funny. Kind of like the, let's look. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this could even go. Oh man, I'm seeing the shapes now. Get that clay build up tool here. Let me just polish up these areas. Got some symmetry issues going on, it looks like. Yo, man, I love me some horns. <clears throat> so is using Sculptress better than Dynamesh, Dynameshing? Uh, I wouldn't say one's better than the other, but they're definitely like, they're kind of in that same territory, right? Where Sculptress is gonna be more localized uh, to the area that you're sculpting and adding geometry there, which can be really useful in, in certain cases. Uh, when it comes to Dynamesh, you're just going to get more of a uniform effect, which we'll be switching to Dynamesh here at some point. See, like this, this area is quite low poly. 
kind of not digging that. Um, you have to remember too, is the, the resolution uh, is dependent on the brush size. Oh, the mesh is hidden. So that's the other thing is you can't hide the mesh if you want to be using this. So like this all has to be visible, which is another kind of pain. But you can see now there's more geometry in this area. It's pretty nice. It's more stuff to work with. And it even works with the smoothing, right? Oh, did I? Nice. There you go. If that ever happens, just press Control N. You'll uh, you'll get back to what you need. So I'm just gonna go in and smooth this area out really quick, just so I get a little bit more geometry in here. Uh, and then I'll just continue onward. Now that we have more geometry, I don't need that on, and it's gonna be a little bit more performance friendly, as you can see. Let's see if we can sharpen this these points up. Uh, where are we at here? By smoothing it. Uh, what is it? BS. Learning these hotkeys is so useful. BSH is the snake hook. The other nice thing about snake hook is it, it moves your geometry in a really kind of organic way, which can be really, really nice depending on some, yeah. Might be a little thin again. B, whoop, B, I, N for inflate. Works for me. Uh, where are we at here? Play build up. Oh. This happens if your model goes uh, dark like this, you're just pressing V, which is switching the color that's happening on the geometry. Right, so if you if you press V, it's now showing this as the primary. You could set it to white and then just go into color and then just fill object and it basically applies that white color to every vertice, which will allow for that to not happen anymore, right? So see now you're seeing it on ones that don't have the color uh, applied to the vert the vertices. Just some some detail. Dude, the other thing is there's like a main thing going on here, you know, like a lion's mane. So maybe we can start to pull on that a little bit more too. We don't have much geometry around the neck area down here. The neck area. This whole thing's a neck. <laughs> it might be debating. It might be time to start dynamishing. So I don't have to deal with uh that type of stuff. I can get a unified or a uniform geometry. Uh, poly count going on there. Um, but yeah, how are you guys doing? Mic and stuff, uh, volume, all that pretty good. <clears throat> oh yeah, Love, Death, and uh, Robot Season 2. Is that May 14th? Wow, that's really soon, actually. You sound great. Oh my god, Vaughn. Stop. <laughs> okay, so we got this guy going on. He's a different style with the way the mouth is kind of shaped, right? I'm going to just make sure I save this. And then uh, we're going to go in and let's just dynamesh this really fast. I don't know what it's going to need. The shape is so long that uh, you're actually going to end up needing a pretty high resolution, I bet. Let's see. Yeah. That was like seven, maybe 800 would work for now. Now we're losing a lot of stuff. The other thing is uh, you start with a default blur of two. If you lower that to zero, it's gonna try not to blur it as much. Uh, and if you toggle the project on as well. Juice, hey, thank you for the uh, for the resub. Uh, if you turn the project on as well, it'll reproject what had dynameshed to the previous shape of it. So it'll try and retain a lot of information that you were seeing. Yeah, you can drop the trailer in chat, Vaughn. Let's go up to 
900 and project it. Let's see how that goes. So this is 900 with project. I mm, maybe maybe want like 12. I need to undo this all first though. We don't lose any of the. Let's try 1200. I think this will work for now. I want to bring it up to 15 on the next on the next sculpt. Sculpting at 200 million polys and 200 subtools only. <laughs> oh god. How did I what was that? I felt like I had a heart attack. <clears throat> Let's, let's look at this curve brush here. Oh yeah. I love, love this stuff. Oh yeah. You use this to kind of define some of the where shapes start and end. For example, in here, right? This area right here needs to go down. Now that we've Dynamesh as well, we can go to Subtool, shift click on this guy. We can hide all of them except for the, the one we're working on. Let's get these loops kind of going through here just to reinforce the shapes. Right. The other thing I actually really like about this type of brush is you can, if you do it inverse, you can like build these, these support, support lines, support. That that kind of look like the under, like what's happening under the the skin. Super cool stuff. I can bring this down this way, loop this around the ear. Nice. How are we doing on questions? Dude, this ear is like so thin. Let's, uh, let's thicken that up a little bit. Don't bring this down here. It's a good spot. You are flooded. What's happening? Flooded? Hello, King's father, god of the perfect stream transitions. <laughs> uh, oh man, good stuff. How's it going, Defcon? I need to clean that inside area up a little bit. There we go. It's like starting to clip into itself, which gets kind of messy. Uh, oh man, I keep looping around. Ooh. So this ear, man, I don't know. See, this needs to flow into the eye, which it does not right now. The eye needs to go out like this. This is where I think the sketching comes in that we were talking about earlier. It's like now, now you can kind of draw on your on your geometry. This is actually down here is quite a bit thinner as well. Do that. Let's thin this out. Yep, 
DMV, get that move going. Let me get that tear duct in there. Or if I can pinch this earlier. I hear Madu moving around. Someone excited? But yeah, you can see too, it's like, man, it's just a lot of like tweaking and, and moving stuff around and just trying to get shapes in the right spot. It's not even about detailing, it's figuring out where the, the details need to be. Hey, Pink, thank you for the, uh, for the sub. Lazatek, how you doing? Good to see you. Getting kind of weird in here. There's this bump as well. Maybe we need to pull that down. One of the things I find really useful is uh, when you use the move brush, was it B B M V? When you use a move brush, it's it moves in screen space, right? So if I if I want to like uh, if I want to pull this this way, if perspective is on, you can see sometimes it's not it's not a perfect it's not perfect. It's not a perfect pull. Right. And so one thing I really like is if you have the, the brush and you press alt, you'll actually move it towards it'll, it'll move positive off of the normal that you have it on. So think about it like an inflate based off the brushes mask. So like if I need this to come out this way, but still stay aligned, I can just put my, my mouse, around the center, which that looks like the center, hold alt. And if I pull, you can see it's coming straight, straight towards you, right? You can see how clean that is. So much more control when you can do that. So much more control. Recommended channel, so I had to pick it out. Hey, you're, you've you come at the right time. We're uh, we're actually in the middle. Of, we're just starting our little digital uh, DINCON event. Uh, we'll have speakers that are coming up in about 39 minutes. We're just going to be talking about our little, our little community, which isn't, I mean, I say little. It's not that little anymore, but little keeps it, you know, it keeps it personal. It keeps it real. Keeps it real for, for some people or intimate, if you want to call it that in a friendly way. <laughs> but yeah, welcome, uh, welcome to the stream. We do all types of stuff in here. See, it's like now that I think we've got these kind of figured out, I'm just going to swipe on the background there. Let's get some more geometry. That way we have a little bit more to work with in here. Um, yeah. Let's see what we can do about the head up here. Maybe we can start looking at, there's some, some details that I really want to push, but it's, it's still too early, but there's like these crease lines. Like dude, remember I was saying you hold negative, or alt to do the inverse look at like what that does to the sculpt like it does these these crease lines that you can build off of to kind of look like hard surface great way to uh get into that point and then if you needed to like say turn this into scaled pieces you've got not only do you have like doing doing this right where you're where you're just drawing these lines but if you needed to once I, I wouldn't even say needed to. I think it's kind of a requirement if you want to do these actions in the lowest amount of strokes possible. So you've got these pieces, right? It's to just bring them up. 
and you can see like it's starting to do the, the scale pieces. What's up, Martin? How you doing? Mr. Martin. Of course, it's a little early for that, but wanted to show you. What's really funny is <laughs> you can cheat a little bit by like, see how I, I made this shape in here and then like cut it through like this. I have this other little one here. And we got this guy that comes up. It's this detail that, that is following its own kind of shape language rules. Jason, what's up, man? How you doing? So because it's following those rules, your brain starts to like to someone who hasn't made it and they're just looking at it, it looks intentional. And if it looks intentional, it tends to be believable to the point where uh, if it's believable enough, it doesn't even, it doesn't matter that it's not accurate to the reference, right? It just looks, if it looks good, it looks good. X, man. bring these up here this area is getting a little confusing see the head goes in here too hmm not really into that It also tells me that the ear needs to come forward. So you can see I'm masking this. If you uh, hold control and click on the mesh, you'll soften your selection. Let me just undo that. Oop. If you do the same, but in the mask, you'll sharpen it. Oh wait, hang on here. That's control, control, alt. Uh, will sharpen and then control click will soften. Usually I like to soften it up quite a bit. Just because you don't want, you want the transition to be smoother if possible. Let's, okay, let's see what we can do here. I've gone into the, the uh, move tool. We're just going to move this out like this and then just kind of pull it. I'm going to go back to, oh, see, there's some symmetry issues going on here. Hang on. We need to, we need to correct that. Foozle, finally home. Hey, <laughs> nice. I put some, uh, oh, this is going to be so weird in the, there's some sushi in the fridge for you. <laughs> put that in the DINCOM notes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let me see here. I'm thinking, so we need to fix that symmetry problem. Man, I always forget how you fix it. I mean, we did it the other stream, right? Because you can do turn the symmetry off and mask half of it, or roughly half of it. And I believe you can just uh, deformation. And then resim, smart resim. Is that right? Mirror and weld. Mirror and weld. Uh, let me let me do realign. Realign button restores mirrored symmetry to the object by adjusting the positions of the vertices, which lie to near symmetrical positions. Let's see if this breaks. Weir and meld. <laughs> oh, I mean, did that do it? It kind of looks. 
a little funky, but. Well, she, what's up? How you doing? How are you? It kind of looks like it did it. Oh man. Hey, thanks for the prime and virus. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the resub, man. 27 months. That's crazy. I think, I think they're corrected. I mean, we've got some weird artifact stuff going on here, as you can see, but, um, let's, uh, let's try grabbing. Let's mask the tip of that ear and see where we're at here. I'm doing good. I'm a little, uh, now see, they're still different. I'm a little, uh, well, I mean, it's kind of going away now. I was a little nervous earlier. This is, I don't know, man, that's not. Modified topology, uh, under modified topology, you have mirror and weld. Do you need to uh, mask? Uh, oh, every time, man. Uh, mirror and weld. This is another thing I really like about ZBrush is if you hold control, it usually has some notes on, on what it does. Button will mirror the tool along the selected axis and then weld all points and meshes to establish the center. Uh, you apply a mirror, okay. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try it. I have a feeling that it's not, uh, I did it. You see the, you see the ear difference here? Very nice, super easy. My concern is that it gets too thin back here, but I mean, where it gets too thin, we just need to go in and clean up the, clean up the geometry and make it thicker. Thanks guys. But, uh, where are we at here? We were gonna try and correct these ears. I've known some people to actually make the ears separately and then once they get get them the right shape that they want, then they go in and do the do the work. Let's uh let's mask all this out though. I'm gonna do this and then we'll do some cleanup behind it. I don't know if you guys saw on Wednesday, I'm going to critique my portfolio, <laughs> my own, because uh, it's horribly out of date. I think it would be an interesting uh, thing to talk about. So this is cool, but that's not cool. But I do like the ears a little further out. <laughs> you like that, Doc? It's like, this is cool, but that, not cool, man, not cool. Okay, I'm just gonna, we're committing to that, and then I'm just gonna... How long have I been using ZBrush? Oh, man. I mean, I've been, I've been in and out of ZBrush for Oh my God, uh, 15 years. I was using ZBrush before it was ZBrush 2.5. <laughs> Thing is, is in games, it's actually quite rare that you're using ZBrush so much. I mean, we can get into that conversation if you want, but uh, yeah, it's just not, it's not something people uh, usually use Of course, it depends on the department and the studio, right? But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty rare, honestly.
It's like, give me that Geo. We're getting there. We're getting there. Is it the case on environments mostly? I mean, if you're, so if you're a character artist, you're gonna be using ZBrush a lot, right? If you're a weapons artist, I would say a lot, a lot of the times uh, you can, there's some really strong workflows that use ZBrush for a weapon art, uh, as well as hard surface. It all depends on like how you create your content, right? Uh, when it comes to environment artists, that can get, it can get a little weird because like, is it, uh, is it needed? Like how, how long is it going to take you to build, build something that you're trying to, to make if you sculpt it? And then are you going to bake a normal for it? Because a lot of the times baking a normal is, um, requires that you made a high poly and then you have your low poly and that's just, it takes so much time. And depending on the type of game you're building is, is really going to dictate like how that all works out. Right. A lot of the times it's just not worth it. Depends though. Again, it depends. Chipping rocks is main is the main I see for environment uh environment art using it yeah and see even then it's like maybe if your production cycles long or short enough there's no time for that we use a lot of big stuff but really depends on the asset to be honest yeah so when you go open world there's not a lot of baking unless it was requested as like a very unique asset right so there's that aspect as well oh yeah dude I love these types of lines that imply. So see it like you've got, let's say you've got these, the way the skin is shaped, right? If you alt drag across that, super nice, like weird skin tissue with veins and tendons and stuff under it. Let's make it a little thicker. There you go. Ah, oh, it's super cool. So, but with all that being said, man, I love sculpting. It just, it just takes so much time, you know? Uh, one day I watched a conference where one of the 3D artists that worked on, from software games, his sculpts were just incredible. It was just the most detailed model I've ever seen. See, that's awesome. I wonder how much time they have to put in to get to that point, you know? Let's get, let's, let's make this nose spicy. Let me just make this nose like just really kind of, just kind of happen for him. Want him to be proud of his nose, you know what I mean? That nice fat front piece there. Yeah, people sculpt some crazy things, man. People that are really in tune with like how to use ZBrush, it's freaking crazy. Spicy nose. Let's go, Tobias. You know what I'm saying. Look at that. Oh, yeah, dude. When we get in here, we'll just use that orb. Let's give it a stylized kind of... And I, what, I think, uh, usually it would, it would dip down like this. Let's, let's correct this area up a bit. Oh my God. Ugh. Nice. I'm digging it. Let's get a little bit more. So see, this is where it's like, if you use the inverse of the, of that edge, look at that. You can do these like really cool chiseled cuts. So interesting. 
And if you invert that, you can lift areas up. Oh man. Do this and then invert here and yeah, dude, look at that freaking beak of a nose. Yeah, Sony Santa Monica uses ZBrush a ton, but it makes sense, right? Looking at the type of stuff they're making. Um, and I mean, it looks amazing. It's just the manual work required to do it is is pretty up there. Dude, the schnoz on this guy is amazing. <laughs> but I bet, I mean, given a studio that's like that, that really pushes that the envelope on like sculpting and, and just trying to um, continue to go that route, you know, maybe they're maybe they're building really good ways of doing it quickly, right? Or they just, they specialize in it so much that it's gotten to the point where, I mean, they've just, they've got it on lock. It's not even a problem for them. Oh yeah, so I need to pull this area down. And then I'll bring this part up. Yeah, dude. Nice. What are we drawing there? What's happening there, Din? Nothing. Nothing. Carpal tunnel in the making doing a ZBrush workflow. <laughs> Killed by something that you like. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's more of a feel for this dragon because I, the face is really boxy. Like if I went, if I was trying to make this accurate, this needs to be like much more boxy, right? And this all needs to come out on the side here. Let's, uh, Let's get those teeth in though. Those are gonna play a pretty big role, I think, in getting that that look to come through. But no, I'm not trying to make it identical or anything. That's crazy. That's crazy for someone like myself who is uh, not too comfortable with any of this stuff. See, that nose needs to come much more forward. I think for the uh, these little mustache hair things i'd probably do those with um hmm, with like their loop spline type stuff it looks like he's laughing in the front that's hilarious i'm digging this nose though it's uh it's pretty serious i mean maybe i just puff up the front here so if we do bmv again right so we're moving and then hold down alt and just bring this forward Maybe that'll be enough. Whoop. Let's get some teeth in there. Let's go. Save this. Okay, so what I would probably do the upper jaw upper lip jaw has a square shape that almost points upwards. Yeah, like I've I've actively decided to curve mine down instead of like because this one's more of like a triangle, right? So I would need to like correct that and bring this up if I wanted to achieve that. That boy got gums. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, he does. Um, so let's let's figure out how this is gonna work with the. Cause like what I would normally do is like okay, 
you have the eyes, right? But I think I want to append this is sphere. Oh boy. Nice, nailed it. Looking good. And we'll just uh I'm gonna shrink that down. Am I late to the party? Red, you showed up at the best time possible. The party is just getting started. What are we looking at for his front teeth here? Count wise, man, they're all together. And then the gums are under there. And then there's the lip edge. That is interesting. Hey, Delaney. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, we can look at the full body. I mean, I have no idea where we're at in this. I right now I'm focusing on the head because it's just such a focal point of the entire mesh. We got a ways to go. And then there's there's some like areas where it just it's smooth and then it goes er, you know, and then smooth and er, and then you gotta we gotta tweak those, shift those around a little bit. Right now he's playing with his little tennis ball here. We gotta turn these into something vicious. Oh yeah, I was zooming in on these teeth here. That's what I got, like one, two, three, four, five. Eh, let's say that's the middle-ish one. I've never liked having a middle front tooth in in this type of design. So I think we'll just we'll just not and say we didn't. <laughs> so let's do uh B S well I'll just snake hook, right? And just pull on this. No, or not. This is going to be a lot of tweakage to make this work. Let's bring this down, maybe. Hmm. That's feeling all right. You're excited for the panel? Dude, me too. Me too. Let me see how those questions are doing. Remember that there's a bunch of questions that you can ask uh, in the uh, questions for DinCon in the Discord. Have I played with the move infinite brush? I have not. Is that in here by default? Move, move infinite, move. There's move elastic infinite depth. This one? Ooh. Oh. Oh, I'm digging this brush. It's kind of like snake hook, but uh, more predictable. Oh my gosh, thank you for showing me that. So a lot of the times I'll go into move and then hold down control and drag this out. You can see now we have another tooth, right? We just need to make sure we're removing these around and just kind of getting them positioned in a way that makes sense. Um, and I think, uh, of course, if we, uh, whoops, we press shift F, you'll see that they're the same poly group. So you just need to be going in and uh, giving them um, their own poly groups. So if you just hit auto, that'll actually allow you to control click one and you can mask them out manually. And I can never see if I do that and then do this. Now I can mask individually. And then I can move this around freely again. Dude, that brush was super nice. Andre, what's up, man? Yeah, that. Uh, I don't know why I haven't moved that brush before, or used that brush before. Move infinite. Uh, move infinite depth. Seems really, uh, really useful. Oh yeah, dude. It's much more um, predictable. Let me 
this is this feels great. Kind of moves a little bit more elasticy. You know what I mean? Um, do that. And these. This one. See now they're all. Wait, hold alt and hit home. Oh no, not home. Uh, this uh, reset orientation. Then you can alt move this around and then just a little bit more control. Very, it's good. It's good. So and then we can let's let's look at uh, play build up again and just think about. We're gonna have to figure out where that lip is, right? But for now, you get those gums in there. I guess the lip was gonna be above above these guys. So if you were to have like this, of course, this is kind of early, but uh, I just want to see what we're looking at here. Yeah, and we're gonna have to like it looks like the front teeth are quite long, and then the ones behind that are maybe like a third pulled back. That's really, man. That brush is sick. Thank you for showing me that. It was really good. Martin, three D, what's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for the uh, the resub. Oh man, we got ten minutes. What's going on, Andre? What software are you using? This is ZBrush. Oh, thanks, Joe, for answering that. So, like, I don't know. I guess the the back teeth going back here are going to be. Let me see if I can even do it like this. I don't know if it's going to move the, the way we're expecting it to. Because they still need them to kind of rotate the same way, you know? Let's look at trance. Like, you're probably going to want it to be like this. Oh, this is gonna bug me. I know there's a way to uh, mask these. You see what I'm talking about? Now we're getting, kind of getting these like weird alignment stuff going on. Let's auto group these again. Maybe bring this one in like this. Ah, there it is. Oh, thank God. Okay, so if you're in edit mode, I always do it accidentally. If you're in edit mode, or sorry, in move, um, you can control click on these and it'll mask based off of the mesh uh, extents. And then you just, Click that, and then you can get the control that you're looking for. Let me look at what this looks like, though. Yeah, see, they're getting longer. <laughs> Don't get longer. Man, some good questions in the uh, server. I'm excited. Just gonna bring these up a little bit more. 
These are super long teeth. Maybe I'll just, if I alt rotate it like this and then squish it, I can then move this up. Reset, alt rotate, squish. Oh, no, there we go. Alt rotate. Squish. You can bring it up here too, and then just have it squish towards the, right? So you can shorten the, <laughs> so cool. And just rotate this and then move this. So this is like the, the scale point. I need to freaking select the right. Imagine someone who's used to doing this, how fast they would be. Working and lurking. Nice, man. Oh, yeah. This one's now is like ingrown ingrown toenail action going on when you be careful I'll bring it up here I think and then rotate outwards there we go yeah this one as well it's kind of doing the thing Let's see if that's enough to Nice. Okay, let's go back here and start sculpting away. Oop. There we go. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Dude. See, and then you can get, dude, this is, this part right here, this is the part I really like doing this stuff. When you start thinking about the shapes and how they connect together, smooth this all out, and then you, you get your, your curve. You can do so many like cool little stylistic curves to these, to these points, right? Like this is his lip, so you could you can crease this edge here, and then you bring this one in like that, put this whole back area out, and this is all part of like his upper lip area. Oh man, it's so sick! I love this stuff. Sorry, I get I get really excited about like flow and like how everything just kind of melts together. Bought ZBrush two weeks ago. I've been loving the sculpting workflow, dude. Nice. Yeah, I got it a couple years ago. Man, I remember when ZBrush was $250. <laughs> and that was like, you had the license forever as well still. See, I feel like this area here needs to be coming out, which is perfect for our move brush. Uh, I wonder if I can do the move, the move infinite, but with an alt. Oh my God, you can. Yeah, dude, this is sick. See, now we're starting to get that square shape again. It's it's happening, guys. It's happening. Thanks for tuning in to the first pre-show of week one. 